Neil Davis, Assistant Director of Training with the Computational Science and Engineering Program. For three years now, I have developed and taught training workshops for computational science and engineering on engineering software topics ranging from Python to high-performance computing to data analytics. During the fall 2015 semester, I developed and taught a tools-based course covering commercial software packages in computational fluid dynamics and finite element analysis. This course explored new directions in the place of com computation and computational tools in our engineering curriculum at the University of Illinois, and suggests means to encourage the appropriate adoption of tools-oriented coursework in engineering curricula at universities. Although the role computational thinking plays in modern engineering is enormous, there are many different professional opinions on the viability of including commercial computational tools in the engineering curriculum. Challenges include the already constrictive limits on major specific credit hours and the chicken and egg problem of incorporating computation throughout the curriculum, much as has already been achieved for physics and mathematics. Another tension is the desire to avoid either teaching a single commercial platform or teaching software as a black box for which students have no idea what occurs in silico. However, designing computational components in the curriculum to avoid these pitfalls can be done. The University of Illinois Department of Mechanical Engineering and Computational Science and Engineering program together collaborated to create the elective tools course under discussion now. This course arose from two discrete sources. Training workshops developed through the Computational Science and Engineering program on structural analysis and fluid dynamic software packages and a growing demand for hands-on computational experience to be incorporated into the curriculum for graduate students. The Computational Science and Engineering program at the University of Illinois has fielded a robust training curriculum in engineering software since 2013. The training workshops were developed in response to feedback from and surveys of faculty and graduate students indicating perceived deficiencies in support for commercial and open source research software. As part of this curriculum, I oversaw the development of several workshops in CFD and FEA software topics, primarily ANSYS Mechanical APDL, ANSYS Fluent CFD, and 3DS Simulia Abacus FEA. These were primarily attended by first and second year graduate students. Another precursor to the tools course consisted of a one credit CFD module I developed in conjunction with Professor Pratap Vanka and Zhang 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 to sit alongside a pure CFD theory course Professor Vanka has taught at the University of Illinois for two decades. ME412 Numerical Thermofluid Mechanics expounds finite difference and finite volume techniques for solving heat transfer problems and fluid flows. At his instance, I worked with Zhang Zhang Zhang, a teaching assistant, to develop and deploy the coursework in Fluent. Together, these experiences argued for the creation of a four-credit elective course to demonstrate the application of computational mechanical tools, separate from the existing computational courses focused on mathematics. The peculiarities of the content, in particular, the major shifts of topic and the hands-on nature of the material, called for an unusual course structure. First, I structured the course to be composable. That is, students could select the credit hours for the components they were interested in, rather than having to take the entire three credit course. Secondly, the heritage of the material as a tutorial guided lesson structure to consist mainly of narrated hands-on demonstrations of product capability and workflow. Students were expected to have taken junior level fluid mechanics and structural mechanics courses and many were also enrolled in numerically oriented courses on CFD or FEA while taking the tools course. Approximately 10 lectures suffice to cover the content from each software topic. Domain practitioners, such as staff from the National Center for Supercomputing Applications, were also invited to share their perspective and expertise with the students. Student learning was assessed via exercises. Next, I discuss the actual content and operation of the course. The first lecture of each component covered the basic underlying mathematics of the software, either the finite volume method or the finite element method. 
these were the most mathematically intensive le lessons. Subsequent CFD topics included convective flow, thermal coupling, boundary conditions, including user-defined functions, compressible flow, validation and verification, turbulence modeling, and chemical reactivity. Subsequent FEA topics included meshing, finite elements, loading and analysis, material, yield, and failure modeling, contact and fracture FEA, dynamic FEA, and batch scripting. A typical tutorial consisted of a narrated exploration of the software package under consideration, coupling practical considerations of the user interface with theoretical and numerical insight. I will examine two of these lessons in depth now, turbulence modeling with Fluent and meshing and element types with Abacus. The Fluent turbulence modeling lesson opened with a detailed lecture concerning the physical behavior of turbulence and the theoretical understanding of energy cascades and kinetic energy dissipation. This permitted students to be better equipped to understand why the governing equations for turbulent flow introduce new quantities such as turbulent kinetic energy and specific eddy dissipation rate. One and two equation models were then briefly introduced, as was the large eddy simulation technique. The characteristic behavior, optimal scenarios, and domains of application as well as the pitfalls of each were discussed. The Abacus Meshing and Element Types lesson. Abacus offers a particularly rich field for discussing element types and meshing strategies. First, partition and advancing front strategies for generating meshes were generally discussed, followed by a survey of the swept, free, structured, etc. methods available in Abacus. Heuristics for quantifying mesh quality and determining when to rework the mesh were identified as well. Students were instructed in mesh partitioning, bottom-up meshing, and mesh verification techniques. As well as handling the mesh itself, element types were also discussed, ranging from the more commonly used continuum beam and shell elements to specialized topics like acoustic, contact, and special purpose elements. The failure modes of hourglassing and shear locking were also discussed, as well as diagnostics and corrective measures. Exercises were framed as exploratory challenges. A typical CFD exercise was to simulate and discuss a von Karman vortex street in the wake of a bluff body. A typical FEA exercise was to simulate and discuss an anchor pylon tower under various conditions of loading for different beam sections. All course materials are available online at uiuc-cse.github.io slash me498cm-fa15. This section reviews the lessons learned and the adjustments made and desired in the course as a result of the first semester. I ended up drawing heavily on the verification cases provided by the software developers. These turned out to be excellent illustrations of program behavior and functioned as a de facto textbook for the course. Several students were also able to contribute discoveries they had worked out through their own research, including a powerful means of scripting Abacus via Python that was largely undocumented. An unanticipated complication of the discrete credit approach taken was that as other student courses grew more difficult, the possibility of locking in two credit hours of A in this class and dropping the final component to lighten the overall workload was exploited by several students. One valid criticism of the course is that the course still introduced students to engineering software as a black box. To mitigate this, I endeavored to point out heuristics and rules of thumb for identifying common failure modes, such as hourglassing or low-grade meshing, and basic procedures for correcting these failure modes. Without deeper theoretical content, it would be difficult to correct this situation further. In addition, subtle breakages and feature obsolescence between software versions, particularly with ANSYS Mechanical APDL, led to occasional unforeseen difficulties with the homework assignments. 
Collectively, these considerations have precipitated four major changes in the core structure. Removal of ANSYS Mechanical APDL. The decision to drop the ANSYS Mechanical APDL was a major change resulting from legacy obsolescence as well as discussion with a representative from ANSYS Incorporated and from dissatisfaction with the repetitive nature of teaching the two finite element components. In particular, teaching similar content twice but on different platforms led to unnecessary confusion and disorganization. The mechanical APDL product is essentially a legacy product at this point and further product development will focus on the Workbench product and its newer software elements. Recommending the Workbench product as the primary component of this class should ANSYS be reintroduced. Addition of greater theoretical background. As mentioned previously, the first version of the course included major theoretical content only as a framing device on the first day. Subsequent lessons concentrated on procedural and troubleshooting knowledge. Students indicated dissatisfaction with the relatively low level of theoretical content, and the next version of this course has been developed to incorporate greater theoretical context for all lessons. Addition of self-guided tutorials. I delivered most content as narrated tutorials which students were expected to follow in real time. Logistically, this presented a difficulty when some students were unable to keep pace. In addition, my sense is that students will prefer to work at their own pace. In other words, the next version of this course will allow these students to work in the class as labs with instructor and TA support. Addition of a term project. With three periods of ten lectures available for teaching, exercises were necessarily fit into the Procrustean bed of one to one and a half weeks in length. The removal of ANSYS Mechanical APDL allows me to fit six weeks of extended project work into the semester. I have opted to split this into a fluids project immediately after the fluent lessons and a mechanics project immediately after the abacus lessons. In addition to these adjustments, the course has prompted a consideration of how this category of material can and should relate to the general engineering curriculum. For instance, each credit hour of material could naturally sit next to a theory latent course or function as a senior laboratory class. Alternatively, a year-long course involving theory, computation, and practical software experience could be developed, although its place in the engineering curriculum is uncertain. Altogether, my experience recommends offering students a tutorial laboratory course oriented towards commercial software packages and competence therein. Students will be expected to master one or more of these packages at some point during their engineering careers, and incorporation into students' formal education can ease their ability to visualize and explore major concepts of structural and fluid mechanics. I would like to thank Arif Abdullah, Sparsh Chada, Binyu Ho, Smruthi Murali, Masood Safdari, Matthew Zapula, and Zhang 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 for the contributions in composing and developing the tutorial content for the course. I would additionally like to express gratitude to Ivana Jashuk, Said Koritz, Ahmed Ta, Brian Thomas, and S. Pratap Vanka for their feedback on and contributions to the course.